this is the first video of a new series that I'm going to be releasing onto this channel. It's going to be documenting how I go from a brief to kind of a final piece. So these types of videos are going to be more personal to me in the sense that I'm showing my own work. So yeah, this is going to be the first video and it's all on 35mm black and white photography. So this project started out with a brief that we were given. Part one was to research, so we had to select three photographers from a list and kind of analyse and see how they worked. Part two was to actually take our own photos, so we were given three themes to work with, uh, a person, a place and a group of people. So for each theme we had to create a body of work telling a narrative, kind of telling some sort of story. Part three was to then develop the film ourselves and then create prints in the darkroom. And part four was to create three different books or documents, um, one for each theme, and they had to be titled and we could include text with the photos if we wanted to. So the first thing was to research. So for part one, I headed to the library and for each photographer, I got a few books. The three I chose were Diane Arbus, Zed Nelson and Chris Killip. So for each of the books I photocopied some of my favourite images and I just compiled them all into a folder. We were to keep a kind of research folder or a research book throughout this whole project so that was me documenting kind of all my research. Diane Arbus was an American photographer from New York and she worked mostly between the 50s and 60s. Her work had a sense of reality and candidness to it and she was able to kind of capture the common unseen aspects of everyday life. I then looked into Chris Killip's book focusing on the Pirelli tire factory and its workers and he combines the mechanical machines with the people themselves and took a lot of inspiration from the way he composed his photos and I really liked how he used the lines and curves of these machines to kind of lead your eye in to focus on the worker themselves. And finally I focused on Gun Nation by Zed Nelson, all about America's relationship with guns and how they affect people. It was really literal and quite straight to the point and there was quite a lot of controversial images. So leading on from research, it was time for part two, uh, which was to actually go and shoot my own photographs. So the camera I would be using for this project was a Pentax MZ50, which I got for like 15 pounds at a charity shop. And my first roll of film was um, Ilford XP2 Super, uh, ISO 400. So I'm going to break this section down into three themes, starting with the place narrative. So as I was heading into the studio one day, I noticed a lot of smoke coming from kind of up the top of Glasgow and I realised that it was like a big fire which had actually been ongoing for quite a few hours. It was all sectioned off already and there was lots of people watching. There was lots of firefighters, lots of fire engines, policemen. It was just a really busy and quite intense scene. So I started to just shoot and was kind of running around trying to get different angles of the fire, trying to capture some of the people around the fire. Uh, I'm going to show all the photos from each of the themes after I have shown how I printed them and how I kind of compiled them in books. But anyway, yeah, I got a lot of photos that day. I thought it would be a good idea a few days later to try and capture the aftermath. So it would be kind of before and after of this whole fire. Me and my friend managed to get onto a rooftop and get a good bird's eye view of the, the kind of remains of the building. I wanted to get some of the surrounding area and just um, show the effect that it had in the city. I was pretty lucky to have my camera on me to kind of document this and get photos. So yeah, that was the place narrative. So for the person narrative, I had the idea of kind of showing a behind the scenes of how a photographer worked. Um, yeah, I asked my friend David if I could kind of shoot some photos of him while he was shooting photos of a model. I met up with him and his friend Monica, who he was taking photos of. Yeah, the shoot was done in a park and it was really chill. I, I wanted to show the relationship between photographer and model 
and try and get some interesting compositions. Because we were in a park, it led to a river with these rocks which gave really nice contrast and I feel those photos were the strongest, which again, I'll show near the end of the video. I wanted to, instead of shoot at a group of people, I wanted to have like individual people but when they are compiled in the same book they would make the group of people so I really wanted to shoot strangers for this and um, it's something I'd never done before but at the time I was really intrigued by Bruce Gilden and Joel Merowitz and New York photographers from the 60s and 70s just really well known for street photography and getting in really close to people so yeah I wanted to show a sense of people that were kind of waiting or observing in the city. I feel as if people in the city are always trying to get from point A to point B and if you look out for them you can actually see quite a lot of people who would rather just relax and kind of observe almost. So yeah I didn't think this was that strong in terms of an idea but I was quite excited just to go and take photos of strangers in a kind of street environment and I was quite happy with some of the photos that I got so yeah so that was the three narratives so I shot them over three rolls of film and it was time to go and develop and make the prints so the first thing to develop was the negatives themselves which was done by a chemical process of developing stopping and fixing once washed and cut into strips the negatives were then made for printing so the dark room has a big basin in the middle and you have three trays for three different chemicals. Then you have an enlarger which basically consists of a light which can be timed and set for different exposures and it goes through a lens and will project your negative and make prints. So the first thing to do was pick a filter which basically controlled contrast. I would always just go for somewhere in the middle to start off and see how that went. So once you had the filter in, it was time to make a contact sheet, which was basically thumbnails of all your photos. After turning the lights off and only having the safety ones on, I took out a sheet of light sensitive paper and placed the negatives on top. I then exposed it for a set amount of time. So once that was done, I developed a piece of paper and I had my contact sheet. So this contact sheet was from the shoot with David and it allowed me to see which ones to enlarge and make a print from. So after choosing one that I wanted to make a print from, I took the negative and put it in a holder which was then slotted under the light to be projected onto the table. So now I had to focus the projection until I could see the grain which would mean you were getting as much detail as possible on the final print and nothing was blurry. So while exposing the print for around 40 seconds, I did some burning and dodging, which is basically darkening and lightening certain areas using shadows from your hands. So once developed, you then have final print. I was happy with this print and I just kept going. But yeah, I really enjoyed the darkroom process and by the end of it I had around 30 prints which were then ready to be compiled into books. So for part 4 it was time to make 3 books for each theme. Because the process of shooting analogue and making prints in the darkroom was so hands on, I wanted to buy the paper for each book and sew them myself so it would be quite handmade. So for this I got some good quality sheets of cartridge paper and some thick black cards and I cut them all to a size of roughly a 12 by 12 inch square. So once cut each book would consist of a front and back cover and the inside would be 4 sheets of paper. So I used light blue wax thread so it was strong but the only problem with this was trying to thread the needle. That was really frustrating and it took me like proper ages. So once that was threaded, I started to sew each book together. Each one took roughly an hour to make. 
and then after that I stuck the prints in with double sided sticky tape in an order that I felt worked well with what I was trying to say. I then just printed off a title and a short introduction for each one just explaining what the book was about. So yeah that was the project over, that was all the three books done and now I'm just going to show all the photos in order for each theme. Thanks a lot for watching if you've made it this far. This was quite a long video but I hope you found it interesting. Please like and consider subscribing for lots more different types of videos coming soon.